good morning or good afternoon. This is Tim Todak with HDX Will, and uh, it, it's another episode of our recurring e-series e webinar on the use of HDX Will imaging with our on-demand software. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about TMJ evaluation and a number of ways in which we can be able to make that evaluation with not only on-demand, but with the uh, imaging of HDX Will. Um, this is actually a very interesting um, topic and being able to work with it a little bit and being able to see some of the imaging that we have as a point of a story that yesterday we were at uh, an installation in education and we actually uh, went through and did a T TMJ study on, on uh, one of the uh, clients and was able to get some very interesting imaging. And so I want to be able to share some of that with you, as well as share some of the imaging that we can do as far as TMJ evaluations. So traditionally, uh, when, when you're looking at TMJs, uh, you're looking at usually a 2D image. You're looking at the ability to be able to do something like uh, panorama, uh, which would allow you to be able to see both TMJs in one film and be able to make the evaluation of the TMJ in occlusion. Um, but a lot of times we find that even if we find pathology, that in occlusion, that doesn't always give us the full answer. And so with HDX Will, we have uh, actually a program or within our CVCT that allows us to be able to do an open mouth, closed mouth. So I wanted to start with the 2D imaging and work our way into being able to evaluate it from a 3D perspective. So kind of going through some imaging that we have, I wanted to pull up some things so that everybody could kind of take a look at it. And then we have kind of a way of making that pathway through so we can see uh, not only the 2D images, but then look at the 3D evaluation of those same images as well. So let me go ahead and open some of these up so you can kind of take a look. Now, as we look in here, that this would be what our open mouth, closed mouth series would be. So what ends up happening in this is in the uh, HDX Will CBCT, that there is a setting to be able to do open mouth, closed mouth TMJ. There's a positioner that we use to be able to uh, give us the opportunity to be able to see that. So I want to kind of go through a couple ways in which we can do that. Now our HDX Will CBCT has two different maximum field of views. We have a 16 by eight and a 16 by 14.5. And so each machine is gonna have a different way of being able to evaluate the TMJ in a 2D and 3D perspective. So I want to be able to point out to you that uh, when we do things like working with the, the TMJ for the 16 by eight, the 16 by eight necessarily is going to get you a field of view that's gonna get you from the bottom of the sinuses to the bottom of the chin. But in a lot of cases back in the TMJ, you're right at that TMJ level at the bottom of the sinuses. And so you may not encompass the full TMJ in that CBCT. So with the smaller 16 by eight field of view model, then we actually have the ability to have a TMJ positioner, which is the bottom uh, quadrant here. And that allows you to be able to essentially position the patient's head a little lower. It allows you to be able to get it to where you can now focus on A, the sinuses, or B, the TMJ, so you can get a full-fledged view of the TMJ, the condyles, and the, uh, the joint itself. And so just to give you an example of this can be done for pano, and it also can be done for CBCT capturing in the 16 by eight. So to give you some visual examples, of what that may look like, that I will pull this up here, and you can see that this would be an example of a CBCT with that positioner to where now we can actually see that we're getting a much higher view, the whole TMJ, by being able to do a 16 by eight, but using that TMJ positioner. So the same thing is this would be kind of an X-ray view of it to be able to see how we can actually move the patient down and be able to get that with a 16 by eight. Now with the extended view of the 16 by 14.5, there's actually an operation that allows you to be able to choose that you wanna focus on the TMJ. And that will make it to where the machine itself will set up its field of view to create that same sort of 16 by eight view on the TMJ. So there are ways of doing it with both types of machines to be able to get that not only for the, the panel or 2D mode, but also for the 3D mode as well. So kind of coming back to that, that we can look at things that we can see when we get into the uh, two dimensional open mouth, closed mouth. Now, the two pictures that you see in, in the middle here are gonna be in the occlusal or closed mouth position to where you can see the condyles are well-placed 
within their, their joint surfaces. Uh, again, again, ways to evaluate this is to actually make measurements of the joint spaces to be able to see if there's equalities or inequalities along the way. But when you go into an open mouth, that you ask the patient to open their mouth and then be able to take a second set of scans. And it sets it up to where your right's over here, your left's are over here. And you're able to see that in this case, when uh, this patient actually opens their mouth, that they have a subluxation outside the joint. Now, this isn't all, uh, all that unnormal for it to have some subluxation, uh, but being able to say that, wow, we have a pretty decent subluxation on both sides, this may give us the ability to be able to say that we need to evaluate the joint from a 3D perspective. So we can go in and we can look at these, make that evaluation and take a look at it. So in this case, I have a follow-up uh, exam with this same patient. And so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up for us if we can. And we can see that uh, as in our last orthodontic that we have our patient here and we have the ability to see their face, we can actually overlap their face. As I like to say, I like to create a story in which I show this is you and this is your scan and then I can go ahead and take away the face and now we can see the skeletal structures and we can kind of take a look at that. So in any part, as we go through diagnostics, I always like to use the 3D view because I like to be able to do my diagnostics and look at it all first. So in these icons over here, I'm gonna to go to 3D. We're gonna to start to evaluate this patient from at least a 3D perspective to kind of take a look here a little bit. So now we can go ahead and I can bring this image back to the TMJ, as you can see, we're moving into the TMJ right here. And so we can start to see again, the joint surfaces. We can start to see if there are any inequalities. The patient's head was slightly turned. So being able to see that there may be more joint space here, less joint space here, may not be necessarily something that is indicative of an issue. But as we go through, we can see that there is some smaller uh, joint spaces. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, there we go. Uh, minimize that. I'll maximize the screen here a little bit. And we can be able to see that e even as we scroll through here, that you can see the joint space is a little bit narrowed on this side, as opposed to this side, which seems to have healthy joint spaces along the way. And so we can kind of go ahead and make that evaluation to be able to see where we are and see if there's anything else we can evaluate along with this. But this is probably the best view for seeing bilateral TMJs in the diagnostic view. Now, again, we have some tools that we can use to be able to look a little bit closer at that. So we can do our 3D zoom, look at that area, create ourselves a box, and then maximize it here so you can see it a little bit better. And now we can go through, and I'll change the bone window to teeth for the time being. But this allows us to be able to actually look at a 3D view of just that section. So we can kind of start to look inside and see where that is, how, how the uh, joint space is, and, and again, be able to do that. Now, what's interesting is, is that if you use the positioner for TMJ, you can feasibly be able to get an open mouth CBCT. So if you have a patient that's maybe subluxing on one side, or even in this case, bilaterally, that you could take a CBCT with that positioner in the open mouth position, as long as the patient can be able to stay still long enough to do so. Uh, we have an ultra fast mode that can make it to where we can do it in only eight seconds worth of exposure. And that may be the better solution in this case to be able to get something to where we don't have to worry about the patient having to hold their mouth in exactly the same position, but be able to get an open mouth version of this as well. So coming back to where we were before, we can also take the oblique view over to here. And actually I like the oblique view here. So I'm gonna come up to where we are, there we go, there's our condyles here. And I can take an oblique view like this. And again, now I can look 360 degrees around that TMJ to be able to examine the joint space. Again, we see in every realm that we, we're seeing that there's a little bit of lessened joint space in some areas. And in my, in my way, I would go ahead and record this side and being able to do that. And then going back to 3D MPR, I could actually go to the other side, do the same thing, get oblique, and be able to do the same thing on the other side to evaluate comparisons 
of being able to do that. Again, in this case, you can see that there is a much more healthy joint space and equal joint space all the way around the joint. So you can be able to at least examine the pathology and be able to look at that as well. So we're able to kind of take this piece by piece, part by part, take it apart. So I always like to be able to use the 3D as my first point of examination to be able to look at it and then break it apart in different ways. So going back to 3D MPR, that then I can start to look at uh, maybe being able to even do something as similar to like a scope of the uh, an endoscopic visualization inside the joint. So in this case, I'm going to blow this up a little bit bigger. It just makes it easier for me to plot the points. So I'll go ahead and look on the left-hand side first. I know it's the left-hand side because the R indicator shows that this is the right-hand side, so this would be the left-hand side. With our CPR view, we can now click on it and click points inside the TMJ to be able to essentially create an endoscopic view through the TMJ and be able to take a look at it. In that case, we plotted out our points. We know where we are on the TMJ. We're gonna go ahead and click airway one. And now our endoscopic view is complete. So now we can be able to look around. So below us in this area here is gonna be the condyle. This is gonna be the joint surface itself. And this is the healthy side. So this gives us lots of room to be able to move around. We can look at the condyle as it actually sits. We can look at the joint space itself and then be able to move all the way through the joint and all the way to the other side. So as an interesting sideline, because the software understands the data, that you're actually looking at the hyoid bone as you're looking down the mandible itself. So just kind of very interesting pictures that you can create with the, uh, with the CPR function and the endoscopy function. So now going back, again, we, now we have the other side that we're concerned about. So let's go ahead and let's try to do the same thing there with the joint spaces that we have. So now we have a much narrower joint space to be able to plot those points, but I could take that CPR function and again, try to be able to find some spots along the way to be able to look inside that joint. And again, same thing, click on airway one, and now we get that endoscopic view. But you can see not only from the CVCT, but even from our endoscopic view, you can see that there's a lot less space in this joint side as we can move through and fly through that same joint space. There's barely room to move our scope around to kind of take a look and all the way out to the other side as well. So again, we've now confirmed it in a number of different ways. Diagnostically, we've looked at it. So now let's break it apart and let's compare them in the 3D view with being able to do it um, through some of our other software gifts that we have. So in here, that in our DVR view, this is gonna be the one that we do our implant planning on to, to be able to work with doing, uh, positioning the patient, being able to map the nerve, all those other things as well. In this case, we're gonna go up to bilateral TMJ. So when we look at bilateral TMJ, this gives us the ability to create a right and left view in the sagittal and coronal planes. So our center view here is gonna be where we're gonna be able to move up to our TMJ itself. So you can see there's our condyles here, one here, one here. And so now we can be able to kind of split this apart a little bit. So we're gonna to go to arch curve and we're gonna go ahead and plot a point across it. Double click to finish. And now we're able to break apart this to take a look at it and see. So now, I'm gonna go ahead and redo this again. I didn't double click fast enough. There we go. Now we're split it apart so we can actually start to see uh, bilaterally how we can compare the two in similar positions. So in this case, we can move that. You can see the blue line as it moves across to give you ideas as to where you are. Same thing here is that I can move that blue line closer to where the other one is so that now we can get truly comparative views of what's going on inside there. I can make those views larger by being able to, by being able to move not just the line, but the point itself and get it in a position where I can see it a little bit better. So we're in the middle of it, we're in the middle of it. And now we can go ahead and see again, larger joint space, smaller joint space. So again, we can scroll through there to be able to see where they are and what they look like.
Same thing here as we look through, we're looking at a smaller joint space here in a comparatively same level. And we can move through from right to left and be able to see that it's much more, uh, gets much narrower as you go out more laterally inside the joint. Same thing here, so we can move medially and we have equal joint space throughout the TMJ as we work through. Now, some of the nice things we can also do with this is we can change this into a virtual reality mode, which allows us to be able to see kind of 3D uh, thickness as well. So what we can do is we can change this right here from an NPR mode to a virtual reality mode. Now, virtual reality needs thickness. These cuts are usually 0.1 millimeters thick, and now we don't have any thickness. So we're just going to add some thickness to this, six millimeters just for argument, and then we're going to change our bone window and the virtual reality to bone. So now you can actually see in this case, I can blow this up, we can actually see as we move through, now we can actually see how it slices through it each little bit where we can see the joint space and then we can see the condyle coming in and being able to move through so we can evaluate where it is. Again, you can see that inequality where there's a lot more space here than there is here. And that gives you an idea as to some of the pathology associated with what you're looking at. And I'll minimize this down a little bit. Same thing over here, we can do the same thing, go to virtual reality, add some thickness. I'll make it equal. And now we can go through the same way. So again, on the other side here, we can also see that now this condyle sits comfortably within the joint space itself and makes it to where we have equal, in, equal joint spacing throughout. That's usually a sign of that the cartilage is healthy, maybe the meniscus is healthy as well, creating an e equality around the joint as well. Again, same thing down here. We'll do the evaluation in all those planes. And again, add some thickness to this. Same thing over here. We're going to go virtual reality, add some thickness. And now again, same thing as we can go and evaluate every one of those through being able to look at the cuts, see how it rests within the joint surface itself. It actually looks a little bit healthier in this perspective on this side. And on this side, comparatively, we can be able to see the same thing. So we can scroll through those with the scroll button on your mouse, being able to look at those and look at uh, the ability to be able to look at those inside the joint and the structures around there as well. So once we go through this type of evaluation, that now we're able to see the TMJ in a number of different ways. So now with the on-demand software, you have the ability to kind of do the exact same thing, but be able to do it in the 3D Ceph mode. So again, if we're back with talking to our patient and being able to show them that, okay, here is your plotted points for 3D Ceph, that we can be able to show them this is you and then bring it down into Okay, so let's look, at your, let's look at your joints here a little bit. Over here is positioning for the head, so you can quickly turn to one side and be able to show the joints over here and the other side to show the joints over here. But that we can also go through here and you can look at the different things we have and we have the ability to do a bilateral TMJ. That bilateral TMJ is exactly what we did before, which is that we created those planes so that we can now scroll through them and be able to do the same function. So you can do it either from the DVR or from the 3D Ceph perspective. But again, it allows you to be able to start with a story and then bring it into, this is what we found on your 2D images when you open and close your mouth and then our 3D images to be able to do so. So it gives you a number of different ways to be able to evaluate that patient and get a perspective as to, as to what may be going on with that patient. So again, as I said, we had a, an interesting uh, day yesterday. And so I wanted to kind of bring up um, another case that we had that we just recently got. So I'll bring up this open mouth, closed mouth TMJ so that this was taken yesterday uh, with a new installation. And so again, we were able to see there was some uh, popping and clicking on the patient on the right hand side. Uh, in occlusion, we can see that there's decent joint space around here, but on the right hand side, there's actually some narrow joint space and again, it's that inequality there tells you that there's either, you know, meniscal or cartilaginous damage or the ability that as it pops, it's slowly eroding those, those structures. As we went into open mouth, you can see that it bilaterally subluxed uh, and almost equally 
Uh, this one actually looks like it's a little bit more, but it may just be the imaging and visualization. But again, the same thing is that we're seeing that, that both sides uh, move out of the way. So with that in mind, I'm gonna to go to my on-demand and let's examine this patient just as the ability to be able to do that. So I didn't get time to load this, so I'm gonna load this real quick from my desktop. And so just like with any other DICOM that you get, that you could have it sent to you, if it's even from another company, you can be able to, to take it within the on-demand 3D app and use these type of uh, uh, features that we can do. So now we've loaded it up. I can go ahead and ask, the, ask it to load. And so again, we're able to get it into our on-demand 3D software once we do the CT. Now in this case, this is one that we positioned the patient differently and use the positioner because this machine was a 16 by eight machine. So in this case, we use that positioner to be able to get the patient's head in a lower position. So this is a great example of being able to use the positioner to be able to get that same view that we wanna do if you don't have the larger field of view. So as we move through this, we can see that, I'm gonna go ahead and move back to the TMJs here. Right here. And then we can start to take a look at them and start to examine them. Now, one of the things is the TMJ positioner does not have them bite on anything. It doesn't really have anything holding them still. So in this case, it looks like our patient may have, you can see a little bit of echo here, the, it may have moved at the very end and being able to get the scan, but we're still able to see and evaluate the TMJ and take a look at it. So again, on the side that, the, the right side is the one that was having the popping sensation, that on the left-hand side, you see an equality of the joint, all the way through, coming through here this way. And on the right-hand side, you see that, you know, whether this looks misshapen or whatever, that there seems to be at least some inequality in the joint space and a closure of the joint space as well. So again, we can take our 3D zoom, we can take our oblique. I like the oblique for this because I'm able to pick up that point and then be able to go all the way around it. You can do the oblique in any view. This is kind of confusing because it lays it on its side, but you can kind of see where it sits and where it's getting close in these areas. So kind of going back to 3D MPR again, that uh, let's go ahead and move ourselves up to the TMJ here. Use that oblique again on the right-hand side. And again, now we can go through and we can look and now you can see the erosion and how extensive it is getting right up into there. Very little joint space, moving all the way around, better in this plane. But as we go around again, you can see that it gets very tight towards the end. And just to create a comparative model, we can go to the other side, use the oblique function, focus on the TMJ, spread it out, and again, be able to go through and we can see much more defined joint spaces, much more space to be able to look at this patient and be able to say that, you know, there is something definitely going on the right side more than the left. So again, we'll go into DVR. And we're gonna to go to our bilateral TMJ function. We'll move our imaging up to the TMJ itself. So here's, you can see the condyles emerging right here. And we can use our arch curve function Draw a line across the condyles. My finger is not fast enough to do it. So I'm going to delete that curve and do it again. My double clicking finger is not having a good day today. All right. And one more time for good measure. All right, so again, we can be able to look through here and see what's going on. Same thing here is that we have the ability to kind of look at that and look through there. My, my double clicking finger, if you don't double click correctly, it doesn't give you this extra view. But again, the idea being is, is that I can look through here and find a bilateral view to be able to see it 
And I don't want to make you guys wait while my double clicking finger is not, not responding correctly. But again, being able to look through there and examine that and look at it from joint space to joint space to know that, that we have a market difference on the right hand side versus the left. And so again, many different ways we can kind of break this apart to be able to go from a traditional examination of being able to do a pano to being able to then have a function within the CBCT that allows us to do the open mouth, closed mouth, uh, and actually start to see some pathology, maybe see some uh, shape changes with the condyles of the, uh, of the patient itself, and then be able to take that information from that step and say, I wanna break it down further and really get yourself a very in-depth diagnosis of your patient and being able to understand more about from the 3D perspective where that, where that is uh, and then come up with a treatment plan associated with that. But uh, again, being able to kind of work through that, this is just another thing that we can do with, with HDX Well Imaging and the on-demand functions to be able to get you the ability to see the TMJ and make those evaluations. So with that in mind, that um, I am now um, open to questions. Um, so if anybody has any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them on the chat. And again, as I said before, that um, if there are any questions that you want to take offline, if there's anything you want to reach out to us, again, I'm the director. My name is uh, Tim Todak, and I'm more than happy to take a phone call. You can call our 1-800 number and ask for sales, and it'll go directly to me. Otherwise, we have our education team that's always available, and they're more than happy to go through and even go on your CBCT uh, to be able to help you to learn more about how to make these evaluations, how to learn how to break the TMJ apart so that uh, you're able to get these evaluations and or any of the other things that we've covered in our courses so far. Um, as we wait for, to see if anybody else is gonna put anything on the chat, that I wanted to mention that uh, the last in the series of these for the time being is going to be on our fusion function, which is the ability to take a CT and then a CT at, at X months later and be able to overlap those two so that you can start to see changes in the patient and any sort of bony changes or CT changes along the way that you're able to overlap those CBCTs. So that will be our last in the series next week is on the fusion function. From that point forward, we're going to be moving into a realm in which we are working on uh, some CE courses that will go through the same sort of platform in which we will have um, uh, doctors, uh, radiologists be able to come in and start to do some discussions about uh, basic reading techniques of CBCT and how to integrate CBCT into your practice to where people who have had CBCT for a period of time have learned that now they are not, never sure what they were missing before with, with two-dimensional imaging and being able to bring three-dimensional CBCT imaging into their practice, that they've changed some of their modalities in the way that they do their practice in the way that they may only do a couple periapicals or a couple bite wings, but then go right to a CT or what have you. So we have some doctors that are willing to, to share their, share their um, modalities with us and be able to make it to where we have some CE credits that we can offer as well. So I don't see any questions on the group chat. So I will say thank you very much for joining again. Uh, as I said, this is recorded. So if you'd like to go back and review any of these functions or these abilities, please feel free to uh, download that video and be able to take a look. Otherwise, um, please reach out to our education department or myself, and we're glad to help you with any questions that you have. Thank you for joining.